What's up everybody? So right now I'm gonna go ahead and watch uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Looks like 1989. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start it. I said I was going to talk about it anytime God would put it on my heart, in my mind, what I should share, I'm gonna share. So let's get with it. <laughs> That's the Lion of Judah right there. All right, so first thing I heard, uh, pizza's done. So um, there's a quote, or the, I think the name is Charlie, no not Charlie, Charlie's friend, partner, right? Um, he was uh, approached by one of these other dogs and the dog is like, you want me to get the pliers and like squeeze his head? And And what I got from that was Judas, the one of the 12 disciples who betrayed Jesus. Now, it wasn't a surprise to Jesus that Judas was going to betray him with a kiss. You see, that's the thing that gets me is that we may have people out there who are friends or even relatives. Even Jesus himself said that your greatest enemies will be in your own household because they know who you really are. They see the, the good and the bad. And when you're trying to be good and do good and be a Christian, you're going to be getting a hit from them with words like, well, you just messed up last night. You know, you had an argument with your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, you made a mistake and now you're trying to make amends. But all they know and see is the old you. Another thing that stuck out to me was uh, in Proverbs, I wrote down 1824, uh, the man of many friends, a friend of all the world, will prove himself a bad friend. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And I encourage you to get friends with Jesus because he is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is the friend, you know, he sent his spirit so that he could teach us through his spirit, comfort us, lead us, and protect us and guide us. So, so far so good. I uh, wasn't too sure if I was going to talk about this one. Um, so Charlie the dog dies, goes to heaven, but he doesn't want to stay. He doesn't like the fact that there will be no more surprises in his life. So he ends up conniving a plan to get back to Earth. He winds back his, uh, his clock or whatever, and that just reminded me of what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Excuse me, um, verse 15 will start. It says, See, I have set before you today life and good death. I'm sorry. Uh, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But, that's a big but, if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. Right there. If, we're the, if the world is drawn away by, it says that the devil is the God of this earth. And he is leading the, those of the earth astray from God. He doesn't want them to get to God. He doesn't want them to come to the knowledge of God and how much God loves them. So he will put God's music, artists, idols, and it will keep them from knowing God and receiving eternal life. And that's Charlie's problem. He wants, he thinks he could do it himself. He thinks he knows what's best for himself. And just like Charlie, or like many of us, how I was, I didn't truly surrender my life until, until I was just came to my rock bottom after like the second dozen time you know we have to hit rock bottom we have to come to a place that we have to admit we're powerless we can't do this alone and that's when god is able to have an opportunity to become your lord and your savior because you are going to cry out to god you should because there's nothing else to cry out to there's nothing on this earth can give you life and that abundantly 
So Anna Marie is the little girl that can speak to animals. <laughs> and Charlie, because uh, at first they're like, his little friend Itchy's like, yeah, he has a monster. And Charlie's trying to figure out, like, how is it that that car face character dog, his partner, his friend, is able to keep the business up and running, even it's exceeded um, Charlie's expectations. Turns out, yeah, he has a little girl, Anna Marie, who can talk. She's like a animal whisperer. She can talk to animals, so she can talk like to the rats that are running the race, figure out who is the weakest that day, and be able to bid on the um, the strongest. So Charlie, uh, you know, kidnaps her, rescues her, and at the end, Anna Marie's saying her prayers, and she's saying like, "God bless Charlie." And right there, it like convicted him, and he was like looking around like thinking that God is going to smite him. But that's not our God. Our God is a good father. He would never smite you. In the Old Testament, he had to deal with sinful. He had to deal with sin in the way that he had to deal with it. So yeah, you would see like the city of Sodom and Gomorrah go up in flames because of fire raining down in heaven, uh, raining down from heaven. So but he doesn't have to deal with us like that anymore. And the world still thinks that God is just mad and wants people to either turn to him or burn. And that's not our God. Our God, if you really want to know what kind of character God is, you have to look at Jesus. You have to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see the character of Jesus because he is the representative of God. And that's what we're called to be as brothers and sisters, as children of God. Whoever claims to be a Christian and doesn't have love, they haven't seen God. They don't know God. And they're a liar. And they, they're making God a liar because they're not loving their fellow man. You, you know, the greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And so that was pretty convicting, you know, that Charlie just has that mentality because that's exactly the mentality that the world has. But let us show um, our neighbors, let us show the world that God is love. And, and how do you do that? You follow the commandments of Jesus. You do what he did. He went and he loved the world. How did he love the world? He set the captives free. Spirit, soul, and body. All right, so there's another one. Um, I liked it. <laughs> uh, so Charlie goes to his nephews and nieces' place. He's like, these are the poorest people I know. And so I'm not too sure if... He was lying or whatever most likely he was and he gives him pizza and then he sees that the little pups are like becoming stingy and fighting over the pizza and then he goes into a song where he talks about um the more you share the more you're going to get and i'm like message <laughs> if you guys haven't seen uh uh we call it that south central movie anyways so a lot of verses came to me um i did a little research on it uh let's start with proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 honor the lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine malachi chapter 3 10 and 11 bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. That's great. That last part. I will rebuke the devourer for you, the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. And your vine in the field should not fail to bear. That's so good because that just reassures us that when we give to God what he's already given to us, when we honor him with the first fruits of our labor, we are saying, God, I trust you, I love you, and I thank you. You're doing all of that. You're praising and you're worshiping God when you're giving back that first 10%. You know, and it, people get turned off, and I understand the, the the religious the religion of church has turned off people to give you know why does the church need money the church doesn't need money we need to honor God and if if Christians would read the Word of God from 
cover to cover, they will understand that God is a giving God. He gave his best for us. That is Jesus. Now, all, we're, all we need to do is just give one-tenth of what we make or what we plant or what we bring in. Because you're saying, God, I love you and I thank you. I trust you that you're going to continue to take care of uh, my needs. And you're, you're also saying that I love you more than money. I love you more than material things. And that's, that's a great, great way to honor God. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. But when you give a feast, Jesus says, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. And then my favorite one, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Message. Well, that's the end of the movie. Uh, <laughs> good movie. Uh, good movie. It had me almost in tears at the end. Um, just because he had sacrificed himself um he had to choose whether to save and marie she was uh she was basically already sick with um like um a cold or something and she was falling down in the water and he had to choose his his little watch which held his time his lifespan or her he originally chose her, but then the watch goes down and he sees it and he's trying to get it, but he's unable to get it. And he has to choose right there in that second. And he chose the girl. And right away, that just speaks volumes of how good God is. And what Jesus said, or not Jesus, but basically Jesus is the word, right? And so those who have been influenced by the Spirit have written what God wanted them to say. And that is... Um, the greatest, I think Jesus did say, the greatest love that you can, uh, I don't know what verbatim, but to paraphrase, the greatest love you can do is to lay down your life for your friend. And so, pretty sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my little, you know, rants, my, uh, what God has put on my heart to share about this movie. So if you guys have any, any requests, whatever, whatever movie I should watch next, Please leave in the comment section. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs, uh, a thumbs up. And I just uh, thank you for your time. God bless and see you guys soon.